I've said it before and I'll say it again. As a content creator, I am somewhat confined to using Windows. If it was up to me, I'd use something else. That said, you're not me. You might actually like Windows and there's nothing wrong with that. Long story short, I was asked to make a video about my Windows setup and who am I to say no? Hey, Vlad here from devinsideu.com, welcome to another video. If you're new here, you should know that this is mostly a Scala channel, however, often I make videos about all kinds of software development related topics, so you might want to look around, maybe you'll find something that you like. Cool, so as already mentioned, I was asked to show how I set up my Windows boxes. I set up a new box every four to five years and the time came and so I just finished building a new PC. I'm old though, so no RGB. Anyways, once I finished building it, I installed Windows, Windows 11 for the first time actually. I activated my license, I made sure that there are no updates to install, and then I installed OBS and started a several hour long recording session, a speed montage of which you will see right after the message from our sponsor, scalajobs.com and rustjobs.dev. Check out the links in the description below if you're looking for a job. This video is also brought to you by awesome people like yourself who support me on platforms like Patreon, GitHub sponsors, or by joining the YouTube membership program. Your contributions go right back into this channel, they allow me to pay for a video editor who frees some of my time, which I then again choose to spend with you, whether it's during live streams or answering your questions on Discord. Furthermore, you allow me to focus less on pleasing the infamous YouTube algorithm and more on the videos that you actually want to see and the ones that I want to make. There's many of you and only one of me, so all it takes is a dollar. Thank you. Alright, now I recorded my entire setup and then I watched it, rearranged a thing or two, and I came up with 10 steps for how I set up my Windows boxes. Before we get to them, please be aware that I never develop on Windows. First it was VMs, now it's WSL, and who knows, maybe I'll go back to VMs. The point is, I never developed directly on Windows. I used to be proud of the fact that I don't even have Git installed on Windows, but I use VS Code to remotely connect to WSL and a Git Lens extension had been complaining all the time that I didn't have Git installed, and so eventually I gave in and I installed Git on Windows. In fact, the only three things that I have installed on Windows that are at least adjacent to software development are Git, VS Code, and Web term. West term being an awesome terminal emulator that I already made a video about. Be sure to sync your VS Code settings with a built-in settings sync and be sure to sync your dot files with a tool of your choosing. I usually prefer GNU Stove and in the past I made a video about it and also made videos about the Nix Home Manager and when I find time I'll check out the awesome cross-platform uh, dot file syncing tool called Chasmoy and then I'll make a video about it. This actually brings me to the first couple of things that I do on Windows and by the way the normal speed recording of my setup is also here on YouTube. The link is down in the description. Windows 11 forces you to log in with the Microsoft account. And even though there is a plethora of videos online where people show you how to disable that, I don't consider myself a data privacy warrior and so I just signed in. That said, once it was all installed, one of the first things that I did was going to the settings and switching to my local account. No regrets so far. So I go through all the settings and configure everything to my liking. I focus on three important things power, defragmentation, and privacy settings. For power, I crank everything up. I like to have control. I don't want my operating system to shut down my screen or my hard drives in the middle of a recording, for example, just because I'm not touching the keyboard. All of my hard drives have been SSDs for years and yet Windows insists on defragging them from time to time by default. There's no need to defrag SSDs. You're just putting load on them for no reason. Those extra write cycles add up and you'll need to replace your SSD sooner. About privacy, there's only so much you can do in the settings. So if you're really concerned about it, check out a tool called anti-beacon from spybot. Be aware that it messes with your DNS settings though. It didn't bother me for years until one day out of nowhere Spotify stopped working. It took me almost a month to figure out that it was anti-beacon's fault. In fact, by that time I even forgot that it was installed. Another thing you could do is do some research and find a couple of commands on the internet that would allow you to manually disable a telemetry service or two. Just please be careful with what you copy and paste from the internet. The next point is my favorite one. I use a tool called the Resilio Sync for data synchronization. It's similar to things like like Google Drive, Dropbox, Microsoft OneDrive, and a couple of others. It is different in three major ways though. By the way, this video is not sponsored by them. No accounts, it's peer-to-peer, -peer, and there is no cloud. And if you want cloud, just don't turn one of your peers off. All of those means that there are no data privacy concerns, the speed is awesome due to peer-to-peer, -to -peer, and there are no bandwidth or space concerns because all of your data is on your computers and on your networks. Oh, and did I mention that it's free? 
I highly recommend the paid version though, which doesn't require any monthly subscription or anything like that. You just buy the license once and you use it on all of your computers forever. I bought mine like 10 years ago. You must be thinking that this license might cost several hundreds of dollars and you're wrong. It's just 60 bucks and often they have awesome discounts, sometimes up to 50%. It's a total steal. For this one-time payment, you get selective sync and a notion of identity management. Totally worth it. In fact, I should talk to them. Maybe they'll sponsor a video or two. All right, now the reason I spend so much time talking about it is because whenever I'm on Windows, I prefer portable tools. And guess what? They are all in BD Sync. One of them is, for instance, West Term, and so I don't even need to worry about syncing in settings because its settings are there in the same sync folder right next to the EXE. So one of the first things I do on a new box is I install Resilio Sync and start syncing literally hundreds of gigabytes of my own stuff. This will take about an hour, even though it's syncing locally from a laptop that is sitting right next to it. I'll be honest, it's much better at syncing several huge files as opposed to thousands of little ones, which brings me to this little trick I use. I maintain a couple of folders which contain shortcuts to program Programs. I put them on a path so that I can quickly access them. It's similar to a Spotlight or Alfred on Macs and there are also tools for Linux and Windows but the big difference is that what I do is not search based and so it's much quicker. There's no guessing. I need to type exactly the shortcut that I chose for the associated program. For instance, WD starts the WSL distribution for dev inside you in Wasterm. GG starts Google Chrome. DC starts Discord. I got dozens of them and they're all synced. One thing I should mention, this time when I was trying to set up BD Sync, I actually couldn't get it to work because apparently there was a time difference between all the peers. It turns out Windows is having some issues synchronizing time. By default, it comes with two time servers and I actually had to use some Google food to find it a third one and use a couple of commands to add it manually. I don't know what was going on there, but that totally helped. At this point, I installed Chrome and jumped through all the hoops to make it my default browser. These times, Firefox is catching up, but I never have time to give it a proper shot. I then installed Bitwarden, the password manager of my choosing, and then I find my Google password to sign into Chrome to start synchronizing all of my Chrome settings. With Chrome installed, one of the first pages I go to is 99.com, which creates a custom installer with most tools I need. More importantly, it unchecks all the bloatware. What a horrible world Windows is that we need something like that. After this, I install all the apps that were not available on Nine Night. Here's a pretty much complete list of all of them. We got Discord, Telegram, and Zoom. I don't use the portable version of Telegram, even though it's available, because its sync collides with the BD Sync's sync, so I install it normally. LibreOffice for Office, Greenshot for Screenshots. By the way, it's also available for Mac. I got TickTick for To Do's, and by the way, I have an affiliate link down in the description. And I installed Telescale, a Mash VPN. Highly recommend. It's free. Now I install the dev tools that I mentioned in the beginning. It's just Git and VS Code for me. VS Code has a portable version. Again, some issues with sync, so I install it normally. Western comes pre-installed because I use the portable version, which comes with uh, one of my sync folders. I do need to install a custom font though, and I use the nerd font version of Fira Code. Cool, let's talk about observability. I don't know about you, but I prefer to have my monitoring tools in the taskbar only. I use Traffic Monitor for network speed, core temp and GPU temp for CPU and graphics cards temperature, and I use taskbar monitors for CPU, RAM and disk load. All the links are down in the description. Now that my Windows is set up for normal use, I can focus on my dev environment. This is where I import my WSL backups. Guess where they were all this time? Of course, in my sync folder, taking hours to sync. I've made several videos about WSL, so you might want to check them out if you're starting from scratch. Really, I highly recommend them. And here we are at number 10. At this point, I just installed Steam and the NVIDIA Experience to get the latest drivers. They make a ton of difference, by the way. Don't use whatever Windows installs for you. Oh, and if you're a fellow content creator, be sure to select the studio driver as opposed to the game driver. Cool, so these were the 10 steps. Afterwards, I continue setting up my content creator stuff, but I'm sure that none of you are interested in that, so I didn't include it. The most important point is that everything is done in layers. Settings, regular apps, dev apps, content creator stuff. There are some links in the description to the tools that I mentioned, and if you know about some cool tools, please let me know. I love tooling. I hope you enjoyed this video. Check out the previous one, and i see you in the next one. For now, as always, it's been Vlad from devinsideyou.com. Don't forget to like this video. If you did, subscribe if you want to improve the developer inside you. And if you wish to contribute to tech education, please consider doing so on Patreon, GitHub sponsors, or by joining the YouTube membership program by clicking the Join button below and watch my videos before everyone else. And most importantly, take care.